And the reading this morning is from Songs of Myself by Walt Whitman. He says, I do not trouble my spirit to vindicate itself or to be understood. I see that the elementary laws never apologize. I exist as I am. That is enough. If no other in the world be aware, I sit content. And if each and all be aware, I sit content. Mm. Ooh. I see you staring, giving, judging, <laughs> mm. wondering what's going to happen, what's going to talk about. Maybe he's wondering the same thing. I think this is a good place to start. On the edge. On the precipice. On the mountain. And I don't stand here alone. No, I stand with you. On this precipice, on this ledge, on this mountain. Looking out into 2019. What does that even mean, right? Does it exist yet? This year that's coming up? Is the future something that's tangible? No. No. All that exists is the here and now. All that exists is this. Yet, it's nice. To look into the future, it's nice to stand on the edge of something, a possibility, on the edge of becoming, to look out into the future and say, this is what I could be. 2019, the year of Andy. <laughs> What's Andy going to become? What's he going to do? Maybe he's going to be healthier. Maybe he'll resolve to eat better. Less cookies, more vegetables. Until they make a vegetable cookie. <laughs> Maybe this is the year that prosperity pours upon him like rain. Maybe he wakes up on January 1st and there's a check in the mail. I'll give you my address later. Maybe this is the year Andy stops complaining. It's one of my resolutions. Stop complaining so much. You know what I complain about? Dishes. <laughs> How did you know? Dishes. Do you guys do dishes? Mm -hmm. Do you guys do dishes? Yeah. How long does it take you to do dishes? Ten minutes? No, not me. It takes an hour. I sit there and I just wash and put and wash and put and wash and put. Finally done with the dishes. I take the towel, I go boop, boop, hang it up, walk away, come into the kitchen 10 minutes later, and there's more dishes. Where do the dishes come from? I don't know. But maybe this is the year. Maybe 2019 is the year I will stop complaining about dishes. Maybe this is the year I'll look at dishes a bit differently. Maybe I'll say, you know what? This is a meal that fed my family. Caked up on here. <laughs> this is a meal that's sticky and smelly. This is a meal that I gotta rub off. <laughs> this is the year. Resolutions. It's a good time to make resolutions. We make resolutions when we're on the precipice. We make resolutions when we feel a transformation, when we feel a change. We make resolutions when we feel like this is the time. This is the time that I can make a decision to become something. And there's something in the way the universe is organized. There's something in the way the year and the calendar is organized that's going to propel me. It's going to help me. It's going to lift me up. And then on January 2nd, you're like, crap. <laughs> Cookies, 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 cookies. <laughs> Universe, you were supposed to help me. I could ask you 
what your resolution is, you might tell me something like that. You might not have a resolution, but if you did, you might say something like, I want to pray more, I want to give more, I want to love more because you're all spiritual and stuff. But did you know that each and every one of your resolutions would just merely be a shadow, an expression of the one resolution that we all make every morning? The one resolution that is echoed in every prayer, the one resolution that is echoed in every self-help book, every guru's talk, every online course and seminar, one resolution. Happiness. Thank you. I resolve to be happy. I resolve to finally find happiness. I resolve to make other people happy so that I can finally be happy. I resolve to be healthier so that I can be happy. I resolve to eat better so I can be happy. I'm gonna get that job. This is the year I get that job so I'll finally be happy. This is the year I start saving for my daughter's college tuition so that she can be happy so that I can be happy. This is the year I stop bugging my wife. I stop complaining so that she can be happy so that I can be happy. Happiness, that is what we all want. Maybe you don't know you want it. Maybe it's buried deep down, but it's there. This deep longing for a life of happiness. I believe, and I might be the only one, that every human being on the planet wants deep down to be happy. I believe that the villains of our history were misguided attempts to be happy. I feel that though we inflict pain on ourselves and others, those are just misguided paths to happiness. Which makes you think, doesn't it? If we all want this thing, if we all want to be happy, if we all think that someday I'm going to make it to the promised land. Someday I will step over the threshold into this magical garden of bliss and happiness. If that's what we all want, why do we all suck at it so much? <laughs> why are we trying so hard to be happy, yet it's so elusive? It's like this thing that every step you get, it gets further away. It's like it's running. It's like, <gasps> it's like dishes. I just did these dishes, and they're still here. I just took another step toward happiness, and it's further away. I think it's because though we try, though we strive, though it's down here pulling us forward, we don't really know what we're doing. We have no idea what happiness actually is. We focus on pathways to happiness. We think, well, if I'm healthier, I'll be happy. I'm going to hit the gym. I'm going to hit the gym. I can't even make it sound right. <laughs> what are you doing after the service? I'm going to hit the gym. Yeah, I'm going to hit the gym. Hey, yeah, I'm going to hit the gym. If I hit the gym, I'll be happy. If I make some more money, I'll be happy. If I get that job that fulfills me, I'll be happy. If I serve others, if I dedicate my life to giving, if I make everyone in the world happy, I'll be happy. Pathways to happiness. Yet, we don't really know what it is we're talking about. So for some reason, we never really get there. So today, instead of talking about pathways to happiness, which are important, I've talked about them a lot in the past, I thought we'd talk about happiness. What is that thing? What is it? So let's start out with the knots. <laughs> Can't get this on. Get it? It's a knot. Let's start out with the knots. Today I'm not going to talk about my favorite topic, although I want to talk about my favorite topic. I'm going to try so hard not to talk about my favorite, favorite topic, but I'm not going to talk about it. 
Today, we're not going to talk about joy. Happiness is not joy. Joy is a state of being. God, as the Hindus describe it, ultimate reality, sat chit ananda, being, consciousness, bliss, joy. God is being itself. God is life. God is existence. That existence is conscious. That existence is aware. And yes, the state of that existence is joyful. That's why every time you do something spiritual, every time you tap into that reality, there's this explosion of joy. Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be a good sermon. Let's talk about joy. No, not today. Not today. No joy for you. No joy today. We're not going to talk about, we're not going to spend some time discussing pleasure. Wouldn't it be pleasurable to discuss pleasure, a pathway to happiness? Standing in front of you, it just feels good to me. I just like it. I just want to stand up here and soak it all in. It's pleasurable. There's a change in my physical and energetic body when I stand here. When I do something I love, there is a ripple in my body that exudes pleasure. When I walk out of here today, I'll be on that pleasure high. And then inevitably, <laughs> it'll fade. And I'll get home and I'll do dishes. <laughs> pleasure is a state of the physical and energetic body. Did you know life is movement? Right now, this chair is moving even when it was sitting there, it was moving. There are atoms and molecules. Life is movement and pleasure is just the mind saying that movement is good. Dusty hugged me this morning. That's the only reason I'm here is to get a dusty hug. And that hug was pleasurable. I liked it. And then I hugged someone else who didn't want to be hugged and she slapped me. And it was painful because my body's saying that's not good. That's all pleasure is. Movement rises and falls like the tides. Don't want to talk about pleasure. Like pleasure, it's great, it's good stuff. It's opposite pain, equally important. Joy, a state of being itself. Pleasure, the rise and fall of the physical and energetic being, happiness. So what is happiness? Happiness is a state of mental being. Happiness is the way we look at the world. Did you know that you look at the world in a very specific way? Did you know you walk out of your room in the morning and you don't see the world at all? You see the world through a window called the mind. Every morning you see reality through the window of the mind. It lets a certain amount of information in. It organizes it. It places it in levels and degrees of importance. And that is your life. If we all walked outside today, we would see this many different realities. And all happiness is, this is the definition, all happiness is, is when that view, when that picture is harmonious. When you are okay with the state of the reality you live in, when you are okay with how this picture looks and your place in it, that's it. That's all happiness is. I look at the world and I'm okay with it. This is me in the world and I'm okay with it. I might be Ecstatic one moment, I might be sad the next. <sighs> Things might happen within that world. It might be imbued with joy. But happiness is just that simple state of okayedness. Okay apostrophe D ness. Okayedness. To make this point clear. I want you to look through my peephole. Seriously. This is my door. Does everyone see the door? Betty, do you see the door? She sees a door. This is the door. And in that door, there's a tiny peephole. 
You have peepholes in your doors? You do? Nice. When you look out of them, what do you see? Just this blurry kind of mess of no, 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 no. Yes. But we're going to look through this peephole and we're going to see what we see. Okay, ready? Oh, it's brown. But it's just brown. It's a brown blob. No texture, no curves, just a blurry brown blob. That's what's outside my peephole. That's what's outside this window. Just a brown blurry blob. That's nothing at all. So tell you what we're going to do. We're going to make this peephole a little bit bigger. We're going we're to expand the peephole. Now, guess what it is? It's brown, but it's got texture to it. Now it's brown with texture. There are these wavy lines, these curves in there. It's brown, but it's alive. I want more. You want more? You want more? Yeah, you want more. Come on. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, now. Oh, that brown is the trunk of a tree. Oh, that's beautiful. It's the trunk of a tree. It's got curves. It's alive. Let's expand it. You want more? More. Let's get more. So we make the hole just a little bit bigger, the view, the window, just a little bit bigger. And we see that tree is moving into the ground. It's got roots. It's got roots that dig. And it's got branches that go up. And there are leaves that die and come to life and die and come to life and die and come to life. Oh! Oh, this tree, this tree is not alone. This tree is surrounded by shrubs and flowers and other life forms, little, little snakes, little snakes, snakes, and all these other, oh, and it's not alone. There are more trees. Let's, let's make it bigger. Let's, uh, let's make the world view, the view of our, this life a little bit bigger. And we see there are more trees and there's a river. There's a river that runs around it and mountains, great big mountains beyond the tree in a village. There's a villa I'm outside the door now. There's a village, a village with people and children, and they're cutting down trees, but they're cutting down trees to build houses and to fuel their fires. And there are other villages and other forests and oceans and a great big globe. And beyond the globe, other planets. And beyond the other planets, a star. And beyond that star, other stars. And beyond those other stars, galaxies and cosmos. And beyond those cosmoses, an entire universe. Look how big that window is. We see the entire universe. And at the very center of that universe, there is a tree. And at the very center of that tree, a little brown blob. You see, that first thing we saw wasn't a lie, wasn't a distortion, it was the truth. Just a very limited view of it. Because at the center of those cosmos, <laughs> Neil deGrasse Tyson's like rolling in his face. <laughs> Someone's destroying science. At the center of that cosmos is a brown tree. What? in the world does that have to do with happiness? How can happiness be dependent on how much of the picture I'm seeing? How can happiness be dependent on how much I let in? Well, if I spend my life staring at a tree, that's my reality. That tree is my reality. But what happens when something happens to the tree? What happens when that brown changes to gray? What happens when that tree falls? My entire reality has changed. My entire reality is upset. Everything I'm dependent on is changed. Everything I'm clinging to is gone. And guess what? Trees do that. Trees change. Everything in this picture changes. And as long as I'm focused on one little part of the picture, I am never going to be happy. Because my happiness is now determined by what happens to the things I think are most important. You might be thinking, how and why would I spend my life, Andy? 
staring at a tree. We do it all the time. Our mind loves to play the importance game. Bless you. I got a little nervous this morning before this talk because this talk is so important. I hate doing dishes because that's not important. I want to spend my time doing things that are important. I love my children. If something happens to them, I would be devastated because they are important. Important. My relationship, my health. God forbid something happened to this temple because it's so very important. You see what we do? We take the view of our lives and we grab onto something and put our face against it. We are making our view of the cosmos and reality tiny by pulling it close and saying, This is what's important. That's how we decide what we focus on. We ascribe importance. My health, my family, my job, prosperity, money, wealth, celebrity, who's president, how many people are starving, how many people are eating. These are the things we focus on because we believe that's the only way we can do it. That's the only way we can live our lives. Things have to be important. People haven't eaten today. How can that not be important? These are my children. How can my children not be important? This is my health. How can my health not be important? I have to hold on. I have to grip. I have to pull it close. I have to give it some kind of importance because if it's not important, it's nothing. So we spend our lives tied to it, holding on to this tree, begging this God of ours to save it. Just, just not this tree. It's not this tree. Just don't do anything to this tree. This tree is important to me. What do you think would happen if we were able to see the entire picture? Do you think the tree would be less important? Let's just say I looked at my family and my health and my job in the context of all of reality. Let's just say for a brief moment I said to myself, These things are not important. These things are significant. Because importance is something I give. Importance is something I imbue. Importance is something I take and I put on a pedestal and I worship. But what if my children weren't important to me? What if they were significant? What if my job and my health and the (laughs) ecological life of our planet and how many people have eaten today, what if those things weren't important at all? What if each one of those things were significant? You see, there's a difference. Importance is something we place on something by lifting it up and saying, yes, this matters more than those. Significance is the natural importance of the natural existential existence of every single thing in creation. Everything's significant. You think you have to make your children important? This is your child, right? He's not important. Ooh, whoa, whoa. He's significant. You think you have to make your children important? Like you have to give them, today you're important. What about yesterday? Today you're important. You don't have to give your children importance. They are significant. You don't have to give your health importance. It is significant. You don't have to give the earth we live on importance. It's already significant. These things are significant. They matter whether you focus on them or not. And by letting them go, by letting them be significant, by seeing them in the grand picture of everything, you start to realize the truth. What do you think this is all about? I want to expand my consciousness. I want to find God in all things. I want to see unity. I want to see oneness. Well, guess where you see that? In the big picture. The 
the wider the picture, the more obvious those truths are. When you look at the cosmos, you see death, life, destruction, stars exploding, stars imploding, life, death, life, death, and it's all perfect and beautiful and significant. Even that tree. Unity. Unity. But you can only see that if you let go of importance. Spiritual practice involves one thing, one thing and one thing only, letting go. That's it. That's it. Spiritual practice is letting go, dot, 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 and letting God. That's all it is. It's a practice. Door, peephole, life. It's a practice of letting go and falling back into that one place that sees all of life with equal significance. Every blade of grass, every ant, every child, every situation, every dish, every talk, significant. Every cry, every hair, every tear, significant. And yes, I'm going to sneak it in. I'm going to sneak it in. I'm going to sneak, sneak it in. And yes, joy in that place. You don't have to make anything in your life important. I know that's hard to accept. I realize that. I have a hard time accepting it. But you don't have to make anything in your life important. Everything in your life is significant. It's imbued with that. Every moment is imbued with the miracle of creation. What could be more significant than that? You think you can increase that by focusing, by staring at it? No. So my challenge to you in this precipice, this transformation, this cusp of a new year, is to stop thinking of your life and what's in it as important and start thinking of it as significant. Letting go and allowing the beauty of every moment to rush over you and seeing reality as God sees it, the big picture. My mom used to say that to me. Every time I got upset, I never understood it at the time, she would always say, what does this matter in the grand scheme of things. She was telling me that yes, this pain you're experiencing now is significant, but it's not important. Because in the grand scheme of things, all is peace. And you can be happy, and you can be okay with what is. You'll see, I promise, pray with me. Get on that piano, girl. <laughs> I find your playing significant. Man, I'm just thankful to be alive. <sighs> because I know that each breath is significant. I'm thankful for this moment here together in community because I know community is significant. Communion is significant. I know that every time I touch you, I know that every time we hug, every time we speak, every time we share a laugh, every time we share a cry, those moments matter because they are. And so that I make this promise to myself and to you that I will let go and allow the moments to have this power. I will let these moments have their significance. I will look at life as God looks at life. There will be pleasure. There will be pain. 
There will be birth, there will be death, there will be gain, and there will be loss. All in perfect balance. And all a gift. So I invite you to step back with me from the door and see life as it can be. Peace. And so it is, amen, and thank you for listening. I appreciate it.